Hi, I'm Daniel from Ratings.com. This is the final video in our series of weekly updates. Many of you have asked if we could apply our test methodology to other products, and today we're announcing monitors as a new product category. There are many similarities between the testing of TVs and monitors, however there are also significant differences, which I'll go over in the video today. First, the scoring of monitors is different due to the different usage. We've designed scores which focus on an office environment, one for gamers, one for editing media such as photos or videos, one for watching movies and TV shows, one for HDR gamers, and a mixed usage score which is a combination of these. In the design section, you can find measurements of some of the most important design aspects, such as the weight with and without the stand, ergonomic options for adjusting the comfort, and border thickness for style and multi-screen setups. The thickness of the monitor with and without the stand is also useful for how close it can be placed to a wall or how much it will stick out when visa mounted. The picture quality section has many similarities to TVs, such as the contrast, local dimming and peak brightness. The viewing angle is now measured in all directions to show how the sides and bottom of the screen may appear non-uniform when viewed from up close. The uniformity tests are the same as for TVs. In the pre-calibration section, we recommend the most accurate picture mode and rate its performance. And in the post-calibration section, you can find our calibration settings and a link to download the ICC profile for each monitor. Color gamma and volume have been split into SDR and HDR sections. The Adobe RGB color gamma and volume are useful for those who plan to edit photos in the wider Adobe RGB color space and the HDR color gamut and volume will become more useful as HDR becomes more widespread. The image retention, reflections, and gradient tests are performed in the same way as for TVs. Color bleed is a brand new test to assess pixel column and row errors. A poor result here results in the appearance of large areas of uniform colors bleeding into surrounding regions. In the motion blur box, we recommend the best overdrive setting if this feature is available. And in the image flicker box, we show the range of black frame insertion frequencies supported and how they affect the motion handling. Input lag is measured with our new tool at the native resolution of the monitor, as well as a resolution where the scaler is engaged and with various signals such as HDR, adaptive sync and black frame insertion enabled. The supported resolutions test includes a measurement of the supported range of adaptive sync features, such as G-Sync and FreeSync, as well as the connectors they're supported on. The additional features box includes details of anything else the monitor may support, such as Tobii eye tracking, on-screen crosshairs, or inbuilt speakers. We're planning on publishing new monitor reviews each week, so let us know if you've got any questions or comments on our testing or scoring. You can also vote on models for us to review at a link in the description below. So that's it. If you like what we're doing, then subscribe to the channel. And see you next time.